Greetings! Welcome to Electronics 2. This is lecture number 15 and I am Bezard Zavi. Today we'll spend some time on differential pairs again, but this time looking to see how we can increase their voltage gain and go to high gain circuits. So we are looking for gains of maybe 50, maybe 100, things that, gains that are not really possible to obtain using the simple differential pair that we have studied so far. Okay, and then we will introduce a new circuit topology, which we call the differential pair with active load. And we will see why it's interesting and useful. All right, but before we go there, let's just uh, review what we covered last time. So last time we focused on the small signal differential gain of the mass differential pair. And we saw that if V in 1 and V in 2 change differentially but by a small amount, then the tail node voltage can be considered constant, which for small signal analysis becomes AC ground. And that allows us to decompose the circuit into two halves, one half on this side, one half on this side. And then for each half, uh, which is just a simple common source stage, we can write a voltage gain like this. And then we also know that the differential voltage gain of this entire circuit is the same as the gain of one half of the circuit. So that would be also minus GMRD. So that's where we are. And what we observe is that in order to increase this gain, we can increase the GM to some extent for a MOSFET. And then we have to increase RD. But as we increase RD, under bias conditions without any signals, remember that half of the tail current flows through this resistor. So the voltage drop across this resistor keeps increasing if RD increases, which means the supply voltage has to go up. So we have a trade-off between how much gain we can get and how low a supply voltage we can have. And that is a critical problem today. The supply voltages are going down from uh, 1.2 volts to 1 volt to 0.9 volts. So we have to be able to operate with a low supply voltage. Okay, so what can I do then? Well, I would like something, some load, that has a high impedance, high resistance, but does not satisfy Ohm's law. And we saw before how that's possible, right? We can replace RD with a current source. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, try to build that. So I'm going to say a diff pair <coughs> with current source loads. All right, well, that's uh, pretty simple. Uh, we just replace the loads with ideal current sources. And that's our a uh, little differential pair. In the first step, we'll assume that these current sources are ideal uh, just to get started. So they have an infinite impedance, meaning that for small signal analysis, we just replace them by an open circuit. Okay, and then we have M1 and M2 here. And we would like to see how much voltage gain we can get now that RD has been replaced with an ideal voltage, uh, current source. All right, well, uh, what we know is that in this case, we can no longer neglect channel length modulation because that would give us infinite gain. And we know the gain is not infinity. So in our mind, we place the ROs here, both of them, right? Each transistor has an RO. So we just put it like this. And now what we would like to do is find the voltage gain in the presence of these ROs. Okay, well, uh, what can we say here? Okay, well, the first approach would be, so approach one. We say we have a line of symmetry, right? If I draw a line of symmetry like this, then I can see that this point is, uh, has a constant voltage. It doesn't change. So it's an AC ground. So let's uh, try to do that 
we say we have a line of symmetry here and that means that this node P, P, uh, VP is constant, right? So VP is constant. That means that the total voltage that we measure at node P with respect to ground is constant. So for small signal analysis, P becomes AC ground. So P is AC ground. <coughs> And the circuit again reduces to two half circuits. And this half circuit here looks like a simple common source stage with an ideal current source acting at its load. So when I try to draw the small signal model of the circuit, I open this ideal current source and all I have is this. Right, so that's transistor number M1. Okay, and this is X. Node N is right here. Okay, so we know what the voltage gain is in this case, right? So we can say that in this case, AV is simply equal to minus GM times uh, RO. Okay, that's, that's what we've seen in the past. All right, so no surprises here. The voltage gain of the differential pair with ideal current sources is the same as the voltage gain of a simple common source stage with an ideal current source, and that's minus GMRO, so sure, that's the differential voltage gain. Okay, well, uh, but that's not a whole lot. This number is somewhere between 5, 10, maybe 15. So how do I go to higher values? <clears throat> so now remember, earlier in this course, in Electronics 2, we started thinking that uh, we know generally the voltage gain of a linear circuit is given by minus gm r out. gm is the transconductance of the entire circuit, meaning when the output is short circuited to the output port is short circuited, and r out is the output impedance of the circuit. And we said, well, maybe what we can do is try to increase r out, hoping that GM will not decrease. If that's the case, then the voltage gain can be increased. And that led us to the concept of the cascode, because the cascode has a high output impedance, and the GM didn't change much when we go from non-cascode to cascode. So we will repeat that same thought process here in the context of this differential pair. So naturally, we're going to look at a differential pair with cascodes. Okay. All right. So what I'm thinking is that uh, uh, this device, these devices, have present a low, relatively low output impedance, just RO. So I need to increase that. I have to replace this, these dev input devices by a cascode structure. And I have a differential pair, so I need a cascode on the left and I need a cascode on the right. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's what it looks like. Here's our ideal current source for each side. So again, we still assume these are ideal. All right, so these are ideal. And uh, we go ahead and introduce our cascodes. So there's one cascode on the left so this is M1, the input device, sensing V in 1. I place a transistor on top of it and connect this to some bias, VB. I have my tail current, ISS, going to ground. And on the right-hand side, I have to repeat the same thing. So on this side, I have M2, sensing V in 2. And I need to put a cascode on top of M2. Now, I, would, I, cannot, I want to draw it this way or that way. I'm going to draw it this way so that both of these cascodes share the same gate voltage, the same bias. So I will draw it like this and connect this here. And again, as you know, when we draw a line like this, it simply means that this gate is shorter to this gate, okay? even though this goes right through the device. 
All right, so here's x, here's y. Let's call these m3 and m4. So the output nodes are here, right? And the inputs are here. So this circuit should have a higher voltage gain because the output impedance is higher. That's the property of the cascode topology. All right, how do I calculate the voltage gain of the circuit? Okay, so again, we benefit from the notion of symmetry. So let's go and change the color to maybe green. So we're going to draw a line of symmetry here and say that I can reduce this to a half circuit like this, knowing that this point is at AC ground. Okay, the common source is at AC. Common source point is at AC ground, the tail node, uh, and of course these gates, which are connected to a constant bias voltage, will also be AC ground. So for the half circuit, what I will have is just this. I have M three, then M one. This is AC ground. This is the output node X, and this is V in 1. Again, the ideal current source has become an open circuit. So if you find the voltage gain of this circuit, the half circuit, that is the same as the differential voltage gain of the original differential circuit. All right, so how do I do this? Well, this is something that we saw earlier in this course. Uh, we know that, uh, again, we follow this mentality we found the GM of the circuit, we found the output resistance of the circuit. We saw that the GM of the circuit is pretty close to the GM of the input device. Not exactly the same, but quite close. And then the output resistance is that of a cascode, which we know how to calculate, right? So what we decided was that AV is equal to minus, uh, capital GM is close to GM1, so GM1, and then the output resistance, uh, which is, in a sense, M3 is degenerated by RO1. So that would be GM3 RO3 plus 1 times RO1 plus RO3. Right, that's what we derived before. And then uh, we, as again, assume that GMRO is much greater than 1. So this just comes out to be minus GM1RO1, GM3RO3. <clears throat> so that's a pretty good gain, right? It's the product of two intrinsic gains. So if we manage to make each of these maybe 10, maybe 15, then the product will be somewhere in the range of 100 to 200 and so on, right? All right, and we know again that the voltage gain uh, from here to here for the half circuit is the same as the differential voltage gain, Vx minus Vy divided by V in one minus V in two. So the same equation applies there as well. Okay, very good. Uh, what remains, uh, are these two current sources. I cannot go by an ideal current source, so I have to replace these by some real current sources. These are p-type current sources because they inject a current into a node and they flow from VDD. So these have to be p-type. And again, if you remember, when we studied uh, the cascode structure, eventually we decided to implement this current source also out of a cascode PMOS structure. Okay, so in the next stage, uh, let's implement the current sources. So those current sources have to be implemented by P devices, P type devices, and uh, Let's change the color to maybe this blue. Okay, so we have something like this. I need a P-type cascode current source. How does that go? Well, you have two devices on top of each other, right? So this device and this device. 
go to VDD. This gate needs a bias, this gate needs a bias. So this whole thing is one current source. Okay, so we duplicate all of this here. So we have M3 and M1. So M1, M3. So all of these need to be biased properly, okay? And this is V in one. And we have a tail current source, ISS. And now exactly this structure has to be duplicated on the right-hand side. So on the right-hand side, we have, uh, okay, let me fix this quickly. So we're going to we're going to have a cascode for the NMOS section of the circuit. So V in two. So this part is just like this part here, right? This, this part here, M1 and M2, M3 and M4. So M1 and M2, M3 and M4. And then this side needs its own PMOS cascode current source. So we just copy this over here. And again, because we need to connect these gates together, we will draw it, we will draw this side, this, uh, this side current source, this side current source just like this. So we go like this, and then these connect, and then these connect. X is here, Y is here, the output differential voltage is taken from these two nodes, right? And then the input differential voltage is applied to the gates of M1 and M2. All right, so uh, this is what we call a, a certain type of cascode. It has a name. If you don't like the name, don't worry about it, but it has a name. This is called a telescopic cascode. Okay, it's just a name. But uh, of interest to us is the voltage gain, right? What I know is that as I go from here to here, the voltage gain will be lower. Here we had ideal current sources presenting an infinite impedance, but here we have a real cascode, so the impedance that this produces at the output node will not be infinity, so our out will not be as high as before, so the voltage gain will drop. Okay, how do we calculate that? Well, again, just like uh, uh, the circuits we studied before, what we will do is uh, draw a line of symmetry. Okay, and this node is AC ground. So again, we just focus on the half circuit. And for that half circuit, we have already derived equations earlier in this course because it's just a simple cascode structure, right? Okay, so uh, what we write is again AV is equal to minus gm1, gm of this guy, because again, the transconductance of this circuit is approximately equal to that of m1. So I'm using this equation. And the next equation is r out. r out is the impedance that I see sitting here. And we derived this before. We said that if I sit here, I see one impedance looking this way to AC ground, and we'll look at this way to AC ground. Remember, this is AC ground. So I have to put these in parallel. So going down, what do I see? Uh, well, uh, let's uh, write these out. So this is what we tried before. So that's GM3, RO3, plus 1, times RO1, which degenerates M3, plus RO3. So that is the impedance that if I see if I sit here and I look down. Now if I look up, I have these devices. So let's give them some names. We have M1234, so we'll call this M5, M6, M7, and M8. So I need to find the impedance of this cascode topology. <clears throat> Well, again, we say that the output impedance is equal to GMRO 
of the cascode device or the output device, cascode device, right? Times the degeneration resistance, RO5, uh, plus one times that, and then plus RO7. So these will go in parallel. I just have to repeat this equation uh, for the PMOS uh, topology. So I have uh, GM7 RO7 plus one times the degeneration resistance, which is RO5, RO5 plus RO7. Okay, so that is the overall voltage gain of half of the circuit, which is the same as the differential voltage gain of the entire circuit. All right, so yes, uh, this number will be less than this number because here we put two in parallel, right? We have the original output impedance for the N section and we place it in parallel with the P section. So it will be lower, but that's the number that we get. Okay, so maybe this is about half of uh, this idealized situation in terms of voltage gain. Okay, so uh, this is an example of a high gain differential amplifier. And this is used, or used to be used actually until recently, uh, because it needs a higher supply voltage. And it has all these nice properties as a higher voltage gain than a simple uh, differential amplifier. All right. So uh, this was a quick look into high gain differential pairs. Now we'll switch gears to the differential pair with active load. Okay, so let me go to the next page and start there and see how we come up with that circuit, the new circuit. Okay, so we're going to talk about <coughs> a differential pair with active load. All right, so the term active load is interesting, right? What do we mean by active load? What's the difference between an active load and a passive load, right? So we have to understand that. All right, but let's take a step back and uh, look at a simple differential pair, okay? Um, I would like to have a differential pair with some reasonable gain so I'm going to replace the load resistors with current sources, okay? And I'm going to build those current sources out of PMOS devices. So we start from here. Okay, so you can see here that uh, we have a PMOS current source on the left serving as a current source and similarly on the right, right? All right. So the gain of the circuit is not that high. Uh, what we will have eventually, if you look at the half circuit, is something similar to what we've seen in electronics one. The voltage gain is GM of this NMOS device times the parallel combination of the output resistance of the NMOS device and the output resistance of the PMOS device, okay? But for now, don't worry about the voltage gain. Let's just look at the circuit as, as it is. All right, now, uh, let's suppose that I have this differential pair and it goes to another stage after it, right? So what possibilities do we have for that next stage? Well, it could be that the next stage has a differential input. Right? So that's great. We just connect X and Y to the inputs of the other one. For example, the next stage can be just similar to this stage. So not a problem here, right? Okay. But what if we have a next stage that has a single-ended input? Single-ended input, it means that it has only one input. So instead of this, what if we have this? Okay, 
So how do we connect this circuit to this circuit? All right, so this is what we call single-ended. Single-ended input. This is to distinguish this amplifier from this. This has differential inputs. This has a single-ended input. So how do I connect a differential pair to another circuit that has a single-ended input? All right, we have a problem, right? Because we have two nodes here, only one node here. All right, well, you might say, um, don't worry about the other node, just connect one of these to this guy, right? So let the other node just sit, float, uh, float by itself. For example, I can connect X to here and not worry about Y. Y is just sitting there doing nothing. So we could do that, right? So we could connect only X to, let's call this A, to A and simply not use Y. So Y is not connected to anything. But then what happens to the voltage gain? Well, we know that the differential voltage gain is some amount. So let's say 10. Now if I take only one side, I am ignoring the other side. So that means that the gain that I have from here to only one node is 5, not 10, right? We know that X and Y change in uh, opposite directions. So Y goes up and down like this, X goes up and down like this. The difference between these two is twice as large as each of these. So if I drop one of these, if I ignore one of these, essentially the voltage gain from the input to that node is half of the total differential voltage gain. So that means that uh, uh, the voltage gain, voltage gain is halved. Okay, so what we know is Vx minus Vy divided by V in 1 minus V in 2. That's what we have found all this time, right? So that would be, uh, for example, GM minus GM of this times RO of this in parallel with RO of that. But we also know that this would be twice Vx over V in 1 minus V in 2. Why? Well, because Vx and Vy go in opposite directions. For small signals, Vx and Vy are just negative of each other. So this would be twice this. Okay, so if I just take the x output, I'm looking at vx over v in minus v in 2, I am missing a factor of 2. All right, so that's a problem, right? So we're, we, we need a, some other circuit that uh, restores this factor of 2. It gives us back this factor of 2. How do we do that? Okay, so the circuit that we will be focusing on is called a differential pair with active load and it looks like this so let me change the color so that we can emphasize the this uh, topology let's see maybe this would work M1, M2, M3, M4, M3 is diode connected, V in 1 goes here, V in 2 goes here, and the output is taken from only one side with respect to ground. So this is V out, and we measure this with respect to ground. This is called the differential pair with active load. Now it looks very strange, right? Uh, we have to figure out why it's called active load and then how do we analyze it? How do we prove that uh, this circuit 
has the same gain uh, as the original circuit, right? I said that when I go to here, as opposed to taking only from one side, I uh, uh, restore this factor of two. So what I'm claiming is that V out divided by V in one minus V in two is the same as this one, right? Okay, so a lot of interesting things are going on here, but we're gonna take it slowly and step by step, we'll go through the circuit, first just intuitively trying to see what's happening, and then we'll try to find its small signal gain by proper analysis, and then see what we get, all right? Okay, so this circuit is a beautiful topology. It's been around for decades. It started in bipolar technology, and now we use it in CMOS as well. So it has many nice features. Uh, let's go to black, okay. All right, so let's just uh, look at the circuit for a while, see what's going on here. Uh, we have a differential pair, M1 and M2, so that's great. So uh, they sense V in one and V in two. As if V in one and V in two are equal, we expect that half our ISS goes to the left, half goes to the right. Okay, so that's fine. And then if we create an imbalance between V in one and V in two, we'd expect that some of the current, some more current goes to the left or goes to the right. That's, that's to be expected, right? So nothing strange here. Uh, but then up here we have a current meter. You see this whole thing is a current meter, right? So we have a current meter And this current meter is not a simple circuit for biasing purposes. Why? Well, this is because the current that flows through M3 is not constant with time. That current, this current, is coming from M1. And obviously, the current of M1 is changing with time when we have a signal applied between V in one and V in two. So this is different from the current meters that we have seen in the past, right? Previously, we conceived the current meter as a nice, robust approach to building constant current sources, right? We wanted the current source as load of a circuit or maybe for the tail of a differential pair, that sort of thing, and we came up with the current meters. But now it's a little, more interesting in that we have a current that flows through a current meter topology that is signal dependent. So we have to see what that means and how that eventually translates to something at the output. All right, so that's the distinct difference that we have here with respect to this differential pair and with respect to other circuits we have seen in the past. All right, so no problem. Uh, that's okay. Uh, to understand the circuit, first we'll just make some qualitative, uh, intuitive uh, observations. So we'll say intuitive observations. So before attacking this complicated circuit, we'll start with some simple circuits, okay? Uh, just to uh, make sure that we understand everything, we understand our fundamentals, and then we'll try to extend those ideas to this circuit. All right, so uh, the first observation that I want to make is this. Uh, let's see. Let's consider a circuit like this. V in one, V in two, ISS. Okay. I have deliberately not drawn what goes here. Something goes here, but don't worry about it, okay? Something, some uh, mysterious circuitry goes here. Okay, it's a question mark. We don't know what's there. Don't worry about it. Let's just focus on this side. Okay, and this goes to VDD. And qualitatively, 
what can we say in the circuit if v in 1 goes up by delta v and v in 2 goes down by delta v all right so v in 1 and v in 2 are equal first and then we allow one to go up and the other one to go down um, if i look at this point what can i say okay if uh, v in 1 has gone up ISS uh, flows more to the left and less to the right. So I have less current drawn by M2. So M1 and M2. Okay, so let's write this out because it uh, can be confusing. M2 draws less current. All right, you agree with that, right? So, if M2 draws less current, let's just call this V out. What happens to V out? Does V out go up or does V out go down? All right, so again, just think of a simple common source stage if you want. In a simple common source stage with an NMOS device, if the current of the NMOS goes down, the upper voltage goes up, right? So here, if the current of M2 decreases, this output wants to go up. All right. Okay, so what we see is that V out goes up. That's the only thing we wanted to see here, okay? Nothing more. So all we want to show is that uh, if this goes up a little bit, this goes down a little bit, this voltage will go up. After all, you can think of M2 as a common source amplifier, which inverts. So if the gate goes down, the drain has to go up, right? So the V out goes up. Okay, so that's uh, the first note that we made here. Let's go and uh, look at the next note. So this is observation number one. Observation number two. So let's not worry about differential pairs for a moment. And let's go back to current meters. All right, so here's a current meter that we have studied extensively okay so for example let's call this i1 and m a m b all right uh, let me go ahead and ask if i1 increases by delta i so I1 becomes I1 plus delta I. What happens to this current? This current also increases, right? Because we are mirroring this current over here. We're copying it. Okay, so this current increases. Now, if I connect this node to a PMOS current source, so this is just a constant voltage, this is VDD, what happens to this voltage here? So the NMOS current has increased because we copied the current, right? MB's current has increased. What happens to this point? Well, again, you can think of this as a common source stage. When this current goes up, this voltage goes up. If this voltage goes up, this voltage has to go down. Or you can say this current increases, so this voltage has to go down. All right, so this voltage goes down. So if I1 increases, this voltage decreases. All right, okay, so we, we're taking this step by step because it can be confusing. So we just have to be very careful with our analysis. All right, I'm going to draw another one of these, but this time everything is upside down. So the current meter is a PMOS meter. So here's a PMOS mirror. And I have a current source to ground. I call it I1. And then I have something like this. So again, we call this MA. We call this MB. So again, let's allow I1 to increase by delta I. So I1 goes to I1 plus delta I. What happens to this current? 
this current increases, right? We're drawing more current here. We're copying it over. So this guy wants to provide more current. So let's connect this to an NMOS current source. So this is constant. All right, and the question is, what happens to this voltage? So I1 has increased by some amount, right? Uh, what happens to this voltage at the output node, this node here? All right, well, uh, this current increased. We copied it over. This PMOS device wants to push more current downward. And this is just a simple impedance, right? So we want to push more current through an impedance. The voltage across the impedance goes up. So this voltage goes up. Okay, so it's important not to confuse this with this. It's important to understand why this goes down and why this goes up. All right? If you have difficulty with these, pause the tape and pause the video and try to understand these very well because now we're going to extend this to the actual circuit and it suddenly becomes complex. So we really need to understand these very clearly. All right, so this is where we are. In the next step, what we will do is uh, look at the overall circuit. So that is our circuit with uh, the current meter up here, and it's called the active load. Active because uh, this, uh, the currents in these devices are not constant with time. Some signal is going through them, right? Because we know that this current is changing with the signal, so this current has to change, and this is copied over here, so that has to change. Okay, so that's why we call it an active load. This whole current meter is considered an active load. All right, so I'm going to apply a small change of delta V on this side and opposite of that on this side. So this is node P, and uh, so M1, M2, M3, M4. Okay? All right. So the only question we want to answer right now is what happens to this voltage? Does it go up or does it go down? That's all. All right? Okay. So let's follow the path of M1 first. This current increases because the gate voltage has gone up. This current increases. That is similar to what? That is similar to this situation. This current increases. If that current increases, this current increases, this current increases, so the output voltage wants to go up. So let's quickly draw that to make sure we don't lose track of things. So this V out wants to go up if we consider this path of changes. All right. How about this side? This side, the, the voltage dropped by delta V. What happens to this? Well, if this voltage drops by delta V, that would be uh, uh, the current of this guy wants to decrease, and the current of this guy decreases, this voltage wants to go up. This is similar to here, remember? If this voltage goes down, this voltage wants to go up. So we decided that too. So we see that uh, M2, sensing a downward change, wants the output to go up. M1, sensing an upward change, also wants to go, uh, VR to go up. So that's great the two are collaborate, cooperating, right? So they both want the output to go up. So in response to an upward change here, a downward change here, the output wants to go up. All right, so again, just very qualitatively, that's what we see. All right, so we still haven't proved anything about the voltage gain of the circuit, right? We have to derive that and see how much it is, but at least now we begin to see certain things that are, that are happening. So, in summary, what happens is that if this gate voltage goes up, this current increases, this current increases, this current increases, meaning that this PMOS device wants to push more current downward, so it will want this output voltage to go up. 
Similarly, uh, when this goes up and this goes down, this current decreases. This current decreases, like here, this current decreases. So this voltage wants to go up. So this voltage goes up. All right, so from both perspectives, whether we consider this signal path, so we really have two signal paths here, right? You can see that. So whether we consider this signal path, or whether we consider this signal path, you see that they both want the output voltage to go up. And that's good because they are enhancing each other in terms of the voltage gain, as we will see later. All right, so that's where we are. Uh, in the next lecture, we will uh, begin to analyze the small signal behavior of the circuit. And in particular, we will see that unfortunately, we cannot assume that P is AC ground, meaning that the circuit doesn't have a line of symmetry.